The Samsung S90C. Is it a good TV or is it something that's just kind of a step down from the S95B? We're about to get the answer definitively once and for all, but before that we do have to unbox this bad boy. So in this video you can expect me to talk about the unboxing process, the assembly, and my initial first impressions along with everything else along the way. So if you like this kind of content, make sure you smack a like and subscribe, and also make sure you comment down below as to what you want to see as I'm going through and reviewing this process. So the first thing I start off by doing is snipping those annoying straps and then we look at the contents inside where we can find the remote. It's the same remote that we had basically last year and we find pretty much throughout all of Samsung's offerings. The legs this year basically are screwless so that's a really nice addition because who wants to sit there fiddling with screws. They are cheap plastic much like the entire build but at least you still have a detachable power cable. I really still don't like all of the plastic that you can find all throughout though but I guess it's something to stop griping about. As far as inputs go, you have all the main inputs. You have one specifically for gaming, HDMI 1 and 2. You have all of the same things, again, that we've seen before, but at least this year they are labeled correctly with stickers versus that weird etching thing. Now, the design feels nice to the touch. It's got the nice metal backing, so even though it's cheap plastic, it's not all the way around. Now, the legs are optional. You can put this piece on, but you don't have to. And it just, again, slides into place where before you would have had to use a bunch of screws. Now, it can be a little bit fiddly, but honestly speaking, once you line everything up correctly and you just slide it in, it goes in without too much of a fuss. Now, as far as initial powering on goes, it's basically what we've seen from Samsung TVs. You're pretty much greeted with this discovery menu where they tell you great new possibilities await you. And you choose whether you want to use a smartphone or you want to use the remote control. I always opt for the remote control. And we're going to be using the retail demos so that you can see what the picture quality is like. And then it's going to ask you to select again your usage mode where again, retail. Now from here you can enable, I'll do it later, but you can do all the smart stuff down the road. And that's basically going to do your adaptive sound and adaptive picture and all that stuff. But those usually are really overly cool and they don't really do the picture much justice. So I always opt to leave those things off. And Samsung always wants to give you this weird little happy menu when you start opening it up and then you get to your home screen where then I always just click OK on that first initial opening. As far as the picture quality goes, though, as an initial first impression, it's actually really impressive. You have really good color. Obviously, it's a quantum dot OLED. But the sharpness is really what gets me. The sharpness is something that I really appreciate without that moray effect or something that just looks generally off. Motion was pretty decent from what I could see, but it's a fairly slow paced demo. So it's not like you're watching a sports demo or anything of that nature. But the one thing that immediately stuck out to me or stuck out to me in every single scene was how cold the picture looked. It's a very, very cool image. So obviously this is going to change once I start calibrating this setup and dialing in the settings correctly because the, the whites look really blue, almost like it's a W OLED, which I found very interesting because typically when you have a television that comes out of the box, it looks like that anyway. But this really did have a cool look to it. And I just, I don't know, I'm not a fan of a cold picture and it just affects the way everything looks. But as far as the black levels, obviously it's an OLED. It looks great, so you don't have to worry about that. Highlight placement, though, was really impressive to the point where you are just seeing really sharp lines of contrast around areas of illumination. And what this means in English is where there's a highlight like on this faucet here, it just glimmers and shines. And I think that is a huge thing. You really feel the luminosity on this set in a good way. Now, I will be comparing this to the Samsung S95B, and I'll also be comparing this to the LG C1 so that you can get an idea between some of the best TVs ever made, how this particular model stacks up. So definitely stay tuned for that. But again, if we're going back to this particular display, I think they did a great job as far as giving you all of the picture quality that you could get, I guess, at this price range. Now, there is going to be a big difference in terms of color saturation from this to something that's like flagship, as in the Samsung S95B. But again, that's something that I'm going to showcase at a later date. Not to say that the colors, like in this example, don't look incredible because those gems are just 
on an entirely different planet right now. So you guys need to keep in mind just one thing. This is only the initial first impressions. We still have a long way to go in reviewing this product, but this gives you a decent idea as to where the starting point is. Now for more on this, make sure you continue to follow this as we talk about the Samsung S90C. Thanks for watching the number one brand in honesty, and until the next video, I'll see you guys later.